Hello, and welcome to another edition of All or Not According to Jack with your host, Jack Toledano. And in the coat captain's chair this evening is none other than Rick Labonte, uh, who's fronting the band uh, Band of Brothers. How you doing, Rick? Very good. Been a while since we had a chat. Yes. Uh, I actually just saw you the other day on... Uh, on uh, what's that show that uh, Jamie Laszlo hosts? Uh, well, the Review Crew. Yes, Review Crew. Yeah, that was fun. I, I didn't get to watch it yet, but uh, what did you talk about? Uh, we were just showcasing the album. People got to check that out. Uh, what we do is uh, each of us bring a, a review, uh, whatever, whatever recent release, release right? And uh, in my case, uh, I talked about Dead Daisies and um, a Joe Bonamassa live album. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, All 2024 stuff. Awesome. Well, uh, thanks to Jamie. I uh, I wasn't even aware that Chicago just put out a live album from 71. So yes. I checked it out and I ended up putting up a quick review, which was uh, great. And uh, told a couple right of nice stories about Chicago. But uh, that that's all she wrote. But uh any event, uh, before we start, I'm wearing this ring. This is a, a commemorative uh, 86 ring of the New York Mets winning the World Series. Of course, they clinched today. And uh, I actually bought this ring at a store in Cooperstown this summer. And uh, Pete Rose was there signing autographs. I was literally 10 feet away from him. And I just found out that he passed away. So rest wow. in peace, Pete Rose. So sorry. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Are you into baseball at all? Well, I know I know who doesn't know who Pete Rose is. I mean, they had bubble gum uh, candy out for the guy. Do you ever uh, do you ever get to uh, Toronto Blue Jays games? Um, uh, yeah, I have. Yes, and Detroit Tigers because it's right across the, uh, the border. So right. uh, we followed uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, baseball um, in our community. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Very nice. Okay, so getting a little off topic. Back to rock and roll. So uh, Rick has just uh, released a music video called Born Ready. Uh, why don't you tell us about that? You're going to be about doing the, most of the talking tonight. So About the uh, the video? Yes. Sure. Um, well, first, well, first, you know, you you write a song, and then you uh, eventually get it recorded. And once you did that, you start to wonder where you're going to go with that offer, right? And... Um, I just I worked with this guy for about over a year now, um, and it's kind of a hand-picked thing. Unlike, you know, uh, family, you don't pick and choose your family, but these band of brothers I did, and I got to pick some real good uh, players and good personality, and we hang out. And so it's not just a working band. We actually hang out like friends. We, we enjoy each other's company. We go to concerts. We go to a lot of events together so it's just a really good thing and um they were learning some of my originals from my uh, living it up album which you know with a double album that had a lot of star power friends of mine from local to international on it you know from uriah heap to tea party guys to pat travers members of their band uh stuff like that and and then what was popular in my community we have a lot of good talent and i would able to act like a director and get these, you know, musical actors that would fit right for the song I'm writing and, and get them on there. And so when you have to uh, perform some of these songs, you need a band to do that. And so they were being pretty faithful, learning a lot of my songs and like over a period of time, you want to reward these guys by any new song you write, you want them on it. Yes. And so, and that's basically how that happened. I was thinking about writing some new tunes that would get their DNA on the album, on the song, and they feel like, you know, they're a part of it. Instead of just backing, even though it's Rick Labonte and the Band of Brothers, they are, uh, I want them to feel some ownership to the song. Even though the song I wrote all by myself, it's still their personalities are on there because I thought when I'm writing a song, I always think about the players that, can deliver too, right? right? And the one of the biggest thing about an artist when they write a song, um, if you're not set in stone, uh, you got to let the song kind of develop in a studio sometimes. It might take its own life. 
or if you have a real finished product, it's very important for you to try to duplicate what's in your head on tape if you can. And when you always work with personalities, you know that that goal is going to be somewhat different. And it's nice when you've got people who can almost read your mind or know what you want to go. And that's what I've been pretty fortunate uh, with living it up in this song and who knows what the next album would be. But it would be the fact that I would able to pick people that I think well suited the song. And saying that, the Band of Brothers, that's a four piece. Uh, there's a guitar player named Tim King, uh, a drummer named Paul Richard, and John Kersey, the bass player. All of them sing back up very well, good vocalist. And, uh, and I would play guitar, harmonica, whatever I need. Sometimes I'm just a front man and they hold it all together like a Led Zeppelin would, right? Three piece nice. band and I'll be the front man and maybe the harmonica and stuff. So it depends on the song. I often play the mandolin or the acoustic depending on the song I'm delivering. In this case, um, I did play some rhythm guitar on a song. That's why it's in the video as well. Um, what was also you hear on the song is that I end up getting a guest. And you know who I'm talking about? Derek Sherinian. Derek, I mean, uh, he's one of my heroes, right? Uh, he's a guy that, you know, had played with, uh, with Dream Theater. He's in Black Country Communion. He uh, had played in Sons of Apollo. He played mm -hmm. on as a you know keyboard player for a lot of great bands, White Snake, Purple Album. Uh, he did, uh, I think, Kiss Live, uh, uh, Alive 3, I think he was a part of. Some real famous albums that I really like. Um, he, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know why I get started because he, he played in so many things. But, How did you uh, hook up with him? That's what uh, I well, See, um, I'm, a, I'm a fan, right? So uh, you see the Son of Apollo shirt? I think yeah. it's one of the last concerts I saw before COVID hit and the whole world stopped and I would write living it up and uh and i met these guys and so i had the you know the you go and meet them in backstage and they would sign the records and they could, this time they were promoting the second album so I'm a, I'm a fan of mike portnoy i'm a fan of Derek. i'm a fan of billy i'm a fan of jeff scott Soto. i'm a fan of Ron. so right. having them all into one band it was like kind of a, a uh, an amazing thing to be a part of and they signed everything i had and they wow. had two live uh i mean two albums and a live album dvd and a poster and i even got the shirt that mike was wearing that night and drumsticks uh, of course watch it framed it and it's up there um but anyway um but they're really cool guys and i got to meet them and i watched them do sound check and i got their picture with them and so over the period of time i had them on facebook and you know Derek been on a sea of tranquility quite a bit and he talked to Troy. he must have recognized my name or face or something but when you have his own facebook page i would comment on a few things and uh or if there was an opportunity to buy uh, an anniversary of one of his albums that i didn't have already i would go online and buy it and so maybe he's familiar with that but eventually he would sign stuff and and, and send me uh thank you for your support rick labonte you know and then he would uh you know, at uh, one point, um, uh, he was, uh, you know, advertising publicly or talking through Facebook um, uh, about that he would uh, listen to people's music. And if he uh, thought he could contribute, he would uh, do something. You know, he's not out there to grab money to anybody he wanted to dump, but he kind of made that known to me. And um, so I uh, took him up on it. I just sent a track that was just... You know, uh, I had a couple of songs, actually. I would, I had this one song called Hang On. It's Dickie before Bang, uh, Born Ready. Hang On was a song that I was developing that I had in the past that I didn't get on record yet. And, um, but I wanted to do something. I recorded it once upon a time called Hang On about, you know, a year 2000 or something like that. But it did sit on a shelf because like I was saying, it didn't quite meet where I wanted in my head on tape. Some good stuff did, but not the whole thing. I wasn't satisfied. So I shelved it. And then there was an opportunity, which is to come out on a vinyl very soon this year, or maybe 2025. There's a, like to help the food bank. They're doing a charity in my community. And, and guys like uh, um, 
Mike Reno from Level Boy and some local celebrities that we have here, Jody Rufu and others, are submitting a song. And so I thought Hang On would be great because it's a good message about people who having trouble. If you think your life kind of shitty at the moment, hang on. Just hang on because if it's worse, it's only bound to get better, right? So just hang on and get through. Because a lot of people went through that, you know, for COVID or mental health issues and that. So I just thought that might be fitting for anybody who's gone unemployed. That's got to be stressful, all right? And just hang on. It's a temporary thing, maybe. So that got the theme going. And, um, and I've written that before, but I thought this song could finally go to a place to a, a, cause it's kind of like a Beatle-like kind of two album uh, song, and it had a lot of uh, harmonies that I put on, and I put acoustic and drums and that, but Derek put on this Mellotron and the keys, the B3 hammering, and he did all this cool embellishment. Like, he really brought the song up. And so to me, it was awesome. That was a great start. And then the second time was, um, I'm in a recording studio with my uh, uh, buddy, Luke Michaud, who's my, he's, he's the engineer, but he and I work together so well. We've written songs in a studio just because we work so good together that just like I was saying, he can understand where I'm going. And he's a, like a Swiss army knife. The guy can play drums, guitar, vocal, and I can do keyboard and all this different stuff. So between two both of us, we're a band. <laughs> and so uh, we've written songs already on Living It Up, like Time Well Spent and uh, Night Shift. So it's no surprising that if he's fooling around on the guitar and I thought, hey, I heard this idea and I went with it. He ended up taking that idea that he went somewhere else, but it was a seed for me for another idea, which ended up being Born Ready. I want it in the key of A, and I wanted this loop that he was kind of close to what I heard, and I went through it in my head, and he played it, and we circled it, and I played the rest of it on A, D, G, and all that other good stuff. And I came up with the bridge, and before you know it, um, the song had been developed. So Derek says, hey, that was good last time. He said, hey, what else you got? And I'm like, I don't got anything. At this point, I have put out a double album, I told him, just now a couple of years ago. And uh, I use everything. I think Hang On with maybe a couple other songs are left around, but I pretty much uh, was using much of it. But I was inspired by that. So I said, well, I have this one thing. I, it's too early. I don't even know what it's called, but I called it Born Ready as a working title and ended up being a title. Might be the title of our next album. Who knows? Um, and I sent it to him. And, he's, and so I go take off. And then my email, he's already has a keyboard idea to it less than a half an hour, buddy. He was already sending me, well, what about this? Before I go blown up, would you like this? And I'm like, wow. And then he goes on a Zoom meeting and he puts me over his shoulder. He shows me the very keys that he plays all these great, um, you know, uh, albums on that I love is on these songs that I, he just done for me. So that got the hamster running the wheel for more dialogue. A uh, couple weeks later, he said, you have anything that you're working on? Let me produce one of your songs. I'm like, really? Yeah. And I would, you know, making sure he understand what it means because he says, I said, well, if you change a song to me, that's you're like a songwriter. You should be getting songwriting credit. No, if I say you need a bridge, you got to come up with the bridge. But I'm just saying, this I'm going to listen to it and make some suggestions. Well, I have this rift just hanging around that I just started in recording, and I wasn't really close to it to feel like the worst thing you want to do is uh, be in a position where you give a song to somebody and they bush it all the hell because yeah. they have an idea and you're too close to it. So with this stuff, it was just brand new idea. I'm not really, I'm just sketching. So I'm not like, it's not a finished product or nothing. So I thought, well, I sent him this and see what he suggests. And he came up with a really good arrangement, taking a piece of this and piece of that. And he cut and paste it and suggest, this is what I would do with your music using everything that I had. And I maybe gave him something like seven minutes long. He came back in a three minute format or whatever. Right. Uh -huh. So we call it make it work. And um, I don't know the working title is what, what it's called. And I'm not sure what it's going to be lately. I've been writing it someone suggested I write um, something else and 
I don't know. It's still up in there on the drawing board, not down. But that's three songs that Derek had put his talent on. Hang on, we'll go on a charity album, and then ultimately when I'm born ready. So I did ask Derek, would you want to do a video? And he says, I refrain from video. He kind of basically said it in a way, in a polite way, that I usually charge so much money that I don't get on a video. And I was on a polite way of saying, you know what, that's cool. I wasn't going to push it. And so uh, I wanted to, uh, him to be a part of it. So I thought, oh, well, I'll show him what he did and said thank you for, uh, you know, nice working with you. And, and I have a picture with him. I thought I'll throw it in that video because I do want to recognize he's a great uh, keyboard player. And I've decided to put it in the song title um, because, uh, you know, Derek is, uh, I'm proud that to have this legend uh, keyboard wizard who I hope voted uh, last year and hopefully again this year for the best prog keyboardist. Uh, I think he's a great, uh, phenomenal player. And you can tell I'm a fan because I love his solo stuff and wow. try to keep up to his uh, music. And um, so, it's yeah, I, uh, I am lucky for one to have the Band of Brothers, good friends of mine that are on this song. That is wonderful. But also have Derek uh it, it's pretty it's pretty amazing that's cool okay so how about the video itself uh i gotta tell you so i watched it two times i two or three times what what i really enjoyed was like around the two minute mark i saw there was like a lot of move a lot of fast movement like there was a camera in the corner of the room just watching all the movement back and forth as the music's playing at like uh during setup uh you know uh load in and load out so mm -hmm. how, how is that effect done? Yeah, well, um, that was put, directed by me and my guitar player, Tim King, who's uh, playing guitar. And he's really good he, uh, at this uh, stuff. And he took the, you know, he did the drone videos. He did all the, uh, the outside shots, all the footage. The only thing we use is my friend who let us host that video at the Rock Music Hall in Windsor, Ontario. And we only had like a two week notice really with the schedule to get that room. We were busy gigging a lot that we had to, uh, we just put it on Facebook. Anybody want to come and uh, come and see us do a video and come on in. And, and I bought like pizza, water, and I made sure that anybody who wanted to come and these are fans and friends of ours. So they would come usually on a weekend uh, without all that, but we wanted to get them in the video. We wanted a lot of good friends there. So with the short notice, we had a good, decent turnout. And um, and so David Michael would be the video um, camera while Tim is playing guitar, of course. Anytime you don't see Tim, that's because he wasn't uh, behind the camera. But he did a lot of other footage that helped um, this whole uh, uh, this thing production put together. And so the song's about what's who, kind of a little bit who I am. It's about being pro rocky being organized, getting your shit together, and know that if you have an idea, you got to put legs underneath it, right? And, and in a song called Being Born Ready, like I'm ready to take on the world, meaning I'm up for the challenge. I'm going to do what it takes. If I got to work at it, you know, I'll keep working at it. And uh, so how do you write a video with a song about that? Right. So ultimately, I thought, oh, what about show what it's like to prepare a show? And so we had our guitar tech and we had the people that help, you know, do our sound. And we have to be in the studio to record the song. It shows us in the field writing songs and, 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 and coming up with the idea. Sometimes you go out and you jam a couple, three or four songs and record it on your phone. And then you say, hey, guys, let's try this at the next rehearsal room. And then next thing you know, we're jamming it out and fleshing those ideas to see if it translates on stage. You, that's what it's called pre-production. That's not always the case because the song Born Ready musically was invented right in the studio. Right. I ultimately took the, that later on show the guys just so they can feel the place in it. And eventually we came up with the bridge because that wasn't all uh, settled yet. But a lot of those ideas were born in the studio, but I tried the bridge with the rehearsal. So in two different places, that whole song became complete. 
And uh, and we also wanted to show what it's like to be in the green room. And you saw the time lap where the roadies are jumping in and out. We had our son being our guitar tech, people that we love near and dear, close to us. So uh, that was kind of cool, seeing some fam family and friends in the, in the, mo in the video too. And uh, and there were some people that I that are really close to me. They're in this, the, on the, you know, in front of us, like they do in almost every show we play with the Band of Brothers. So to me, it looks so familiar when I watch that video because those are the smiling faces that are looking back at you uh, most nights. There's maybe more strangers there too, but you get to re you get familiar with your followers and regulars, and you know who's paying attention to your your dream and making it possible. So. Yeah, that's pretty rewarding. So we wanted to make sure they knew about it and you can get involved. I had a lot of people say, oh, I wish I could be at that video. I wish I was doing that. But they love the song. And speaking of uh, the reaction, um, first of all, you mentioned about the video. When we uploaded it, uh, it wasn't in 4K. And I had almost a 1,000 views already clicking up, clicking up. And I had to take it down within six or seven hours because I realized the 4K wasn't uploaded. Could do that put it on the big screen, it lost its integrity to bits a bit. So uh -huh. to break it up. And so how do we do it? Now it's back where it was, about 700 and climbing. Hopefully uh, if more people go on in from your channel and others can take a look and get more uh, traction. But most importantly, I got the good feedback and it already got uh, played on a satellite radio, already got played in a local uh, scene so far. And it's less than a week old. And so I'm already getting some, uh, you know, a little bit of buzz from it already. So I'm pretty proud about that. And sure. definitely doesn't hurt people like you and Pete doing a uh, part of doing a plug in for me um, can go a long way, right? But, oh, without a doubt. Uh, yeah. So I, I have a couple more questions and this is sure. going great so far. So uh, um, I, so Rick and I are friends on Facebook, and I see a lot of activity. Uh, come come Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, I'm playing at this place in Windsor. I'm playing at this place in a neighboring town near Windsor. And so how many shows are you doing with the Band of Brothers? Are you playing like every weekend? Oh, practically, yeah. I also have a blues band called the Blues Side that we uh, play oh. a lot. We need to do some original, but we do the... Hats off to, uh, you know, um, Air Clapham, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, and Albert King, and, and we do the Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix thing, and, and you know, it just depends on the, the venue, uh, what, what, what is required of us. The Band of Brothers, they know a lot of my, you know, what I would call the greatest hits of my uh, rock stuff that I know from my... Uh, from the 60, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, right to the 21st century. We know a lot of music. Um, I played in a band called The Formula for years, 13 years, and that was it. The Formula was about a band that could adapt to any environment. I would look at the audience like a DJ and say, okay, these people might want to hear this, and then these guys want to want to hear that, and I would make it, and it's a variety band, so to speak, because I love, you know, my taste in music. I love a lot of music. I'm not a right. one-trick pony. I love it all, uh, mainly blues, rock, and prog rock, and metal, and all that. But I'm not into uh, hip hop or anything like that. Yeah, but yeah. and I'm not really a country bunkin either. I'm not really into and not not to you know. I'm married to a country. Rock. I like a lot of different music like that. Um, but I don't follow. I mean, I've seen some great country artists like Brad Paisley and a few other people mm -hmm. just hanging around in another festival with other artists, and I was like, you know, I can enjoy it. I can appreciate reggae, appreciate jazz. I like. Fusion. I like a lot of music, but my my wheelhouse is rock and roll and blues and blues rock. So I'm gonna be in the environment that I know best of, and and that's what I do. So so the band allowed me to do that. But in every case, both bands, we showcased my originals along the way. Right. They have some stories to tell, and they're being well we you know received. The people uh, seem to respond very well. And that's important. That's cool. Excellent. Um, okay, so next topic. Uh, any albums in the works? Well, like I said, I just have three songs down in the can. We have one blues side song that's called uh, TMI, Too Much Information. 
I think we're just gonna Which release title? that. We're just gonna release that as um, a single, um, probably maybe in October or November. And that was just a project I did for over ten years now to stress that it's a blues that I like and do different things with my vocals that I don't get a chance to do. And because I'm a harmonica player, I can play a lot more keys and a lot more things to do uh, in the delivery. So, um, yeah, so I like that. Um, but, you know, um, I'm going to concentrate a lot more 2025, I think, on the Band of Brothers rock and roll stuff to finish. Just um, I don't know if there's another album. The thing is, I'm working with a real a creative bunch of guys, first of all. And the guitar player, Tim King, he had an album called Feast of Kings. And it's like uh, like my my album, I invited guests to play on it. He did this kind of same thing. Um, and uh, and it's, he's a good songwriter. I like some of the material. So I hope that we were able to collaborate on a couple or uh, and see where that goes. And so I'm open-minded for that because I, we have a great chemistry on, on stage and off stage. I like to see that happening in songwriting. So we're going to test those waters pretty soon. Okay, very cool. Uh, now the topic that I've been chomping at the bit to talk about, and I, you know what, I knew about this for about a good month or two, but I, I couldn't say anything to just to respect a certain person's wishes. Uh, December 7th. Uh, uh, there's there's going to be a mini fest in uh, Newburgh, New York, uh, hosted by our good friend Pete Potter of the Sea of Tranquility, a person that I've known for almost and been friends with for almost forty years, if that it can be believed. That we're still friends through thick and thin, and you know, so many things have happened in our lives. But uh, uh, we he knew me before my children were born, so. Yeah, but uh, basically, uh, so he's having a mini fest uh, at a place called The Warehouse in Newburgh, New York on December 7th, and Rick and the Band of Brothers have been invited to play there. So uh, yes. how did that come about? I just think from the last time I played at the Fall Fest of Sequenquility Fall Fest, I had the opportunity to bring my acoustic guitar and Eric Porter, who's uh, a New Yorker, filled in as a guitar player. Maybe he might even play with me this time around. Um, uh, and uh, Louise Nassar from Chicago right. came and played bass. And we did uh, originals and some covers, you know, just to fill in. And it was more or less a, a warming up the crowd uh, while they were still, you know, um, have more people come because we had Pat Travis that night, Van, uh, Vanilla Fuzz, and Nectar with Poster Play. Right. But so I was in there, and there was another band, um, and so yeah, it was it was a fun time, and we had a good time, and and uh, I did told him though it would be kind of cool if I had my band, you know, of like with drums and all that, yeah. we, like an unplugged uh, scenario, uh, setting where it's an acoustic guitar. I mean, we were plugged in, but you know what I mean. It was. Right. Uh, it wasn't uh, all balls out with amplifiers and guitar and and I me get to you know really well on vocals. Um, it was more of like a singer songwriter moment, and that's what I did. And um, but yeah, I would like to be able to hang out, and I'm so looking forward to seeing you guys. I had a blast hanging out with you and the, and yep. the others, and and just to think that we're all gonna hang out again. And uh, I'm already. Um, already excited then i get to bring my buddies with me to say hey you got to meet some great people and yeah, you're gonna have fun and so yeah. they're like yeah let's do it you know uh and so that was awesome now there there was some talk about us just coming to perform and there'll be other bands and as they trying to get this uh venue and what would pete was doing it looked like it wasn't gonna happen and it was Dan Brown that kind of saved the day with him offering his place and offering sort of like sponsor my band to come on down because in most events you need a sponsor to get down. And he basically, him and Pete worked it out that, hey, would you want to come? And they offered me if I want to come and bring my guitar and I can do the singer-songwriter thing. I said, but I would love to bring the band. And they said, 
let's do it. So arrangement's been made, and what was great is that, um, um, you know, we don't have to bring a PA or anything like that. It's going to be provided for us, and they even have a house kit. We're basically bring very minimal stuff just to be able to uh, travel light and uh, uh, and have a great time and have a walking weekend. I've, my idea is to get there the Friday before, and then Saturday set up during the day and just hang out with you guys too. It's my turn to play rock, rock star, and then I go back hanging out with you guys. Very cool. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward. Uh, I don't know if anybody knows this, but uh, so for the last uh, SOT Fest, uh, Rick and I actually ended up staying in the same hotel. So we hung out a little bit and uh, yeah. we drove together to the event and uh, it, it was a lot of fun. And I actually convinced a few of you to come to uh, what's the Cracker Barrel for breakfast in uh, Fishkill uh, that Saturday morning. So that was cool in itself. Yeah, yeah, it was cool. And able to fellowship with everybody, and uh, and uh, and of course, uh, Dan, his hospitality is wonderful. Great cook. Yep. He fed us there before at the warehouse, and uh, right. I enjoyed it there. And I love the history. I love what he does to decor that place, and uh, to think that we're gonna play some rock and roll where the cool records are up on the wall. That's kind of cool. Hey, maybe like you get it. another real music video out of it. Who knows? Oh, you never know. But you know what? Um, there's a couple of Easter eggs in the uh, in the uh, in my music video, as a salute to the SOT community and you guys were because they uh, little did I know, I didn't know about it till the next day. We played that show and and Pat Travers and Vanilla Fudge, but we're having um, lunch or brunch between breakfast and lunch uh, with uh, at uh, Dan's place. And uh, and uh, Dan, um, uh, Pete gives me a sequin quality shirt right there. Uh, I'll get it. Sure. This one. Uh, and, and, and I go, oh, cool, right on, buddy. And yeah, but you, you turn it around. Oh, and little did I know, I had my name on the back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. So with all the people that were playing, so I'm like, that's cool. <clears throat> and they gave me an extra large. I'm usually a large, so I I was like, I'll take it. And then um and then they sent me another one um so I can wear. It. But I was like, man, that's so cool, right? Uh, and so I threw that in the video, right? So to show um the memory because I had a lot of fun and made some uh, great friends. And I mentioned, hang on, um. That was the first song Derek played on, but it was interesting to know two of my buddies from the SOT community and people we met at that event played on. Jim Bocci from uh, California, he's in that Fuzz Buzz band in, uh, you know, uh, Mac Boogie Overdrive. He has uh, played guitar on it, he played lead guitar on it. Oh, very and nice. Uh, Lewis Nasser played the bass on it, who played with me in New York. He played the bass on that song. So. Hang on had two of my SOT friends on it with Derek. So that's kind of cool. Very and, nice. Uh, yeah, so cool. when it gets on vinyl, I got to send them a copy of that song. Okay, so uh, so how far is Hang On from being released? In, you know? I don't know. Like, the, everything done. It's mastered. It's ready to go. The way they were doing it, it's kind of a fundraiser thing. So they wanted to get a key sponsor so they could make a bunch of copies. And then they sell it, and all that money goes to the un, uh, unemployed help uh, center, which it's a food bank, and it help people, uh, uh, you know, get them on their feet, whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. And it's just a good thing because our our community does that a lot. In fact, that's why you see that up there. This is the, I got inducted in Music Hall of Fame because of what I do in the community. Bring it over. Hold on, I'll be right there. I got these. These are things that our community is very uh, conscious. Our community is very conscious of recognizing people that do things. Mm -hmm. And like I got inducted in the Music Hall of Fame from my marketing community and what I've done to give back to the community, mm -hmm. not just take, take, take as an artist can. I do give a lot and, and, and help a lot of charity. Out. And then you get recognized by labor for your activism and our community, right? So. These are the some of the people that I go to to help out and get the sponsors as a community partner to um, make do some good work, right? And that's how this album 
just started taking off on its own. She's got this guy named John Powell who used to work with uh, um, uh, Lover Boy as a manager, and he kind of coordinated all this and invited me to be a part of it. I made enough, you know, of a splash in the community, and they know me well here in our community that um, that they wanted my song on there. And I, at the time, I didn't want to give anything I already had. I like to think that I would write something on the fly, but right. hang on with what already brewing and i thought hang on i couldn't have been a better song title for a, a good you know thing to do so that's how that happened all right that's that's uh great stuff awesome good to hear um so before we wrap up uh is there anything else that i missed that that uh we haven't talked about well no you you, you pretty much talked about how the song was written and how the video was done i mean we started recording that over the course of the summer, and uh, and um, and the song is out. Oh, we can say this: it's out. The song is available now uh, on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to your music. I mean, Deezer, Tidal. I mean, hundreds of musical platforms around the world. Born what Ready is, is out there now. What I will say is that uh, in the video. Uh, it, once once I put it out there below in, in the comments section, I'm going to uh, put the link so anybody can just click on that link and go to the video and, and watch it. Uh, Born ready with talking. I would appreciate that. Even if you've seen it before I put up the 4K, come back and see the new version of the song. It's very uh, better visually and the quality auto sure would be enough. enhanced it was great yes uh yeah so please click in uh comment tell rick how great he is so <laughs> yeah uh you will tell me how great i am but no i'm just kidding i, I don't oh nada right yep yep that's right <laughs> so, so uh anyway uh, uh it was great talking with you jack and i do appreciate that you uh, reaching out and you've sure. been a supporter of my last album too. And you gave me a nice plug in there. And it's nice that, that, uh, you know, uh, you haven't forgotten and this, this Canadian over here. And I appreciate that. And I just want to tell everybody out there that, uh, you know, when you meet the guy behind the camera, behind the show, uh, he's as transparent as you see him here. He's always truthful as it, it can be. But we have a lot of fun. We enjoyed each other's company, and it was like, it was for um, for only meeting, you know, never met the person that long. We gelled like we knew each other all of our lives. It was so easy. We knew each other for a couple of years. It was just yeah. our physical bodies met for the first time. Otherwise, you know, and that, yeah. that's cool within itself. I mean, I, I have other friends through these channels that I've met for the first time, and it's one guy I actually went to a Met game with, so it was the coolest thing. So yeah. right on, and I and since then I bought a couple more Primal Fear albums that you turned oh, me on. Nice, okay, that I didn't cool. uh, have in uh, my collection. That was cool. Who knows? Maybe I'd like to at some point. Uh, we connected on that album homework assignment. I I might like to bring that back at some point. Maybe maybe that's a next year project, but we'll see. I I don't want to steal the idea from anybody but you know what it was such a good idea i think people would enjoy it if, you know if we did it again the homework assignments oh yeah that was cool i liked it it had a it had a momentum yeah it, for a while it did yeah. yeah uh what was the other thing i brought back uh for a little while the dream set lists that that was pretty cool uh i don't know did we did you do one with me or or no um trying to think did we do a set list no i, know I don't think talked we about, did. no we did talked about the top 10 or something like that but uh, we did we did uh uriah heap. songs of uriah heap and top songs of uh rush that's right rush too but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't uh i think we're just songs i think right. all right well i mean i have a lot of ideas floating around in my head so at some point i'll ping you and uh you know what if not, we'll talk it uh, on December 7th, if, if I can get your time for, for even two minutes. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll make time, yeah. right? Yep. We can always, we can do it over breakfast. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy you a drink. There, there you go. 
All right. But uh, all right. So uh, thank you for being on, Rick. Uh, best of luck. And uh, if we don't speak, I'll see you on December 7th. It should be a lot of fun. Looking Take forward. It easy, my friend. All right. Uh, and everybody, thank you for watching. Uh, it's been real. And uh, check out Rick's video. If you like what I do, please subscribe. And I thank you very much. Uh, over and out. Bye, all. And let's go Mets.